Hi, in this video I will show you the implementation of Martin Fowler's state machine domain specific language in TextX. This language is introduced in his book Domain Specific Languages, and the story goes like this. Ms. Grant has a secret compartment that is locked and concealed in her bedroom, and to unlock it she has to do uh, certain actions. So, for example, she has to close the door, she has to open her drawer and then turn on the light, and after that the compartment will unlock. So, this is the classical example of a state machine language. We have a concept of, of events. Events is something that is sensed by our state machine or our controller. And we have a comments. Comments is something that is executed by our state machine. And of course, we have states. Uh, states declare the set of actions that are actually references to comments, and those actions are something that is executed when the state is entered. And we have transitions. Transition the declare for what event we're going to what state. More or less, this is the classic state machine, but we have a uh, small twist here, we have something called reset events. Reset events, in this case, uh, are those events that when happen, the state machine will immediately go to the initial state. In this case, we do not want someone to see Ms. Grant when she uh, when she's opening her secret compartment. So when the door open, uh, the state machine will immediately go to the initial state. This language does not uh, declare what is uh, that initial state explicitly, but we can say that the first state declared in our model is the initial state. Let's see the grammar of this language in text text. First rule, or the root rule, is called state machine, and this rule will actually define the whole model. And the model consists of events, starting with the keyword events, and there are one or more event object. Then we have reset event that are actually references to event object. Uh, we state that by using uh, square brackets. So this is not uh, the matching of the actual object, object that this place, but uh, the name of the event object. And this is optional. After that we specify comments. There should be one or more comments starting with the keyword comments and ending with the keyword end, and after that we have one or more state. Each event is defined by its name and the code. Each command is also defined by the name and the code, and each state is defined by the keyword state, then the name of the state. After that we have optional actions that start with keyword action, and in uh, curly braces we have one or more action, which is actually a reference to a command object. And then we have transition that are declared like uh, event. This will be the reference to event. So at this place we will have to specify the event name, then the right arrow, and then the reference to a state. And this rule is interesting because it is used in several places instead of the built-in ID rule. Why is that? Because this language uh, does not have many syntax noise, there are no, for example, semicolons and commas and so on, so the parser could easily be confused uh, by this end keyword, uh, and this end keyword could be matched like the name of the comment. So instead of using id at this place, we are using smid, which uh, is using negative look ahead to state that. Uh, at this place, ID will match, but only if it's not keyword, and the keyword match is declared as, a, as an order choice of keywords, and events, risk events, and so on. And the last rule is a comment rule that is a special rule in TextX. If you have a comment rule, it will be used to match comments uh, in your language. So we are using here regular expression match to declare the block style Rule, uh, comment rule like in C-like languages. And this is the comment. Now let's see how this looks like if we visualize using text text comment. So text text comment 
text text visual command will check the meta model and the model and then create dot files that we can see with x dot for example we can see our state machine meta model this is our meta model so we have comments we have states in our model and we have events and that we each state has transition and each transition has a reference to a target state with a attribute with a reference to state and to an event with a attribute called event. So this is a meta model of our language and let's see how the our misgrant controller looks like. So this is the model. And what you see here is actual uh, visualization of Python object graph. So you actually get this Python uh, object graph when you parse your model. And everything is here. So you have state machine instance and you have uh, state machine has a list of states. Uh, each state has a list of action and transition and so on. But this is not a very nice way to look at state machines. So uh, this generic view is not enough. We need something like some form of domain specific view for our language. And I will show you now how you can use text text to generate a nice dot representation of your state machine model. It's written in a script called sm.py and it's a very small script that will load your model from the command line and then call the function to translate it to a dot representation. This is that's uh, this little function. This function will get a model this is text text model of your state machine and then we'll iterate through all the states of the model and render node for each state and then render the transition for each state's transition and if there are reset event it will render those events too in a way this is um, we are with this little script we're giving a first semantic to this language so the, the semantic of this language can be like this uh, this language is used to draw a nice state charts. Okay, let's run this sm.py and give it to Ms. Grant controller. And let's see how this representation looks like, Ms. Grant controller. Bit. And it, this is now much nicer. We can see our states and our transitions and each state could uh, specify actions. And we can see reset events. But we can also, for example, interpret our model and give it some other semantic. And the script in the example folder called state machine is actually a little interpreter in Python. It's a 70 line length interpreter that will take your model from command line, instantiate meta model using text text, instantiate model using that meta model, and then instantiate the state machine class, give, give it the model to interpret and call the interpret main interpret loop. Let's see how that works. I will leave to you the analysis of this little code. Let's start it with uh, state machine and call it on Ms. Grand controller model. And here we are. We are in idle state. And the input from keyboard is actually event. We're simulating an event to this state machine. So let's try some event. For example, let's turn the light on. We are still in idle state, nothing happened. Let's try to close the door. Now we are in active state. Let's try to open drawer. Now we are in state waiting for light. Let's turn on the light. We are now unlocked the panel. Now we can, for example, close the panel with this input. Let's try if the reset event works. For example, we can close the door and we can open drawer and now we let's open the door it's uh, event 4 we are going to idle state so it's working and at the end I will show you that uh, this translation to dot and this little interpreter is not in any way dependent to actual model of state machine so let's see some other model of state machine in this case it's a very simple model of a locked gate we have only two states locked and then unlocked uh, when the, we are in lock state and we insert coin in our gate, it will transi transit to unlock state. 
when we are in non-lock state and we pass through the gate, it will uh, go to lock state. Let's first run our smdoc script on this gate, this gate model, and let's see it in using x dot gate sm. So this is the simple representation of this state machine, only to state and to transition. Let's try now interpreter. So state machine uh, and call it on gate.sm on our gate model. So we are in the locked state. And let's try to pass through. Not happen. Let's try to insert coin. We're in analog state. Let's try to insert coin. We are still in analog state. Let's try to pass through the gate. We're now in lock state. So that's it. You can find more information on TextX on the TextX project page, and you can find the full source of this uh, example in the TextX GitHub repository. Bye.